So this is where humanity has got to. We are at a crossroads. If we carry on as we are now, cutting down the forests, polluting the rivers, introducing alien species around the world, and pumping filth into the atmosphere. Then the mass extinction will continue. But uniquely, we have it in our power to reverse the process. The issue is, do we have the will? Because if we don't, it is possible that we too will join the ranks of the extinct. It doesn't matter how intelligent we are. If things get beyond a certain point, nothing will save us. I think human beings are a failed species. We're on the way out. Uh, we are flawed. Our intelligence isn't of the kind that is compatible with nature. We're living too long. We're breaking all the rules. Our lives are so artificial that they can't possibly be sustained within the limits of our particular planet. Like any species that's got something wrong with it, nature is going to get the better of it and see to it that it becomes extinct. It's an extreme view, but Professor Bolter believes that we are stretching the planet's ability to support us and that we will wipe ourselves out just as we once did to the dodo. because it is possible that we are not going to be able to cope with the changes we are forcing on the Earth. There are twice as many of us as there were 50 years ago. We are all consuming more, warming the planet. Unless we stop, the equatorial regions will turn into deserts. And as sea levels rise, there will be less and less land to support us. What will we eat? Where will we grow it? With famine comes war. And they are followed by plague pestilence. As more and more people cram into a smaller space, disease will spread. We'll need medicine, but where will we get it from? Many medicines are derived from tropical plants. As they are swallowed by the desert, where will we turn? It could all be leading to disaster. It might seem far-fetched, but it has happened before. History is littered with civilizations that collapsed because of the damage they did to the environment. The Maya thrived in the jungles of Central America until they reached the point where the land could support them no longer. Easter Island was once covered in forest, but people cut down the trees to help build their statues. Only when they were all gone did they realize they couldn't live without them. These statues stand as a testimony to what happens to those who destroy their environment.
I think it would be a grave injustice to speak of the human species as, in some sense, evil, uh, even though we are destroying the environment uh, so efficiently at the present time. Basically, that's not our intent. It never was. It was necessary for survival for the ancestral human beings to throw everything they had against the wilderness in an attempt to conquer it, to utilize it, to open it for new populations. And for millions of years, that paid off without undue damage to the environment. But then what happened was we succeeded too well. And at long last, we broke nature. If we are unable to undo the damage we have caused, some think that the best thing that could happen to the planet is for humans to die out. The planet would, would, of course, be delighted for humans to become extinct. And the sooner it happens, the better. There's no question that the planet would go wild with celebration. The other species will be pleased to be rid of us. It might seem like a glum future for humans, but perhaps not for the planet as a whole. Without us, life would still go on. It's in times of dramatic catastrophe that extinctions take place. And it's there that there are opportunities for evolution to start uh, new groups uh, within the new environmental opportunities that that catastrophe is given. One of the great things about life is its resilience. And with humans out of the way, life could bounce back remarkably quickly. After a few years, the seas will start to fill with fish again. The forests will start to regrow, and as our cities crumble, the air will be filled with birdsong once more. Within just a few centuries, the planet will forget about us, and natural order will be restored. There's some work I was involved in some years ago where we found a new continent. Thirty-five million years ago, this new continent suddenly emerged out of the sea. And it lasted until about ten million years ago, and then suddenly the North Atlantic got wider and this continent submerged again. There were no mountains, there was no connection to any other land, but there were plants, seeds and things had blown there, there were birds and there were other invertebrates living there. must have been a very pleasant, peaceful place. It's that concept that I often think the Earth is trying to attain. That's the kind of environment that it wants for itself. And I think that's the kind of place that it will turn back to once the present catastrophe has passed. That's the way the Earth will be again, just as nature intended. It might be a lovely place, just we won't be there to see it, unless we change our ways.